So a real good morning. Welcome to everyone who is here and I uh, really appreciate the, um, the presence that all of you uh, offer to this one space where we can collectively from as far as Hong Kong to uh, New Zealand and Australia and um, New York, Oklahoma, Israel, um, Wales, and in the Netherlands, Germany, so many places in the world right now, the UK obviously, uh, London, yeah, <laughs> um, which is a little like its own thing in the UK, sometimes people feel, um, but just a real warm welcome to this uh, opportunity to collectively be here uh, from around the world in, in, one, in one moment in time. So, um, someone sent me something yesterday and I didn't read it till this morning. And when I read it, I immediately just felt uh, a, a, a connection, but an important message. And the message came from uh, White Horse of the Hopi indigenous tribe. And as soon as I just saw that, um, my eyes kind of lit up, my heart opened a little bit because I grew up in Arizona and the Hopi uh, indigenous people, they used to live primarily in Northeastern Arizona, but also down where I was in um, Tucson, Arizona. And very early on, my mother took a love to a liking and a love of the Hopi um, people because they, Hopi means the people of peace. And in Mandarin, in Chinese, Heping means peace. So I don't know whether there was just a coincidence or if across the Bering Straits, people really did migrate, as some believe. Um, and it's just a beautiful thing to feel that there is a, a tribe of people who for centuries called themselves the people of peace. Like how wonderful, first of all, is that, would that be? But the message, I'm gonna share part of it. Um, actually, I'll just, read, I'll just read the whole thing uh, out to you guys. Um, I think it's really beautiful. Let's see, where is that? Uh, oh, where'd it go? Uh, maybe I won't read it all. <laughs> I don't know where it's gone. Wait, uh, it was up on my screen a minute ago. Mm -hmm. I can find it. Give me a moment. <laughs> there you go. All right, so this is the message from them. This moment, humanity is going through what can be seen as a portal or as a whole. The decision to fall into the hole or go through the portal is up to you. If you repent of the problem and consume the news 24 hours a day with little energy and nervous all the time with pessimism, you will fall into the hole. But if you take this opportunity to look at yourself, rethink life and death, take care of yourself and others, you will cross that portal. Take care of your home, take care of your body, connect with your spiritual house. When you're, take care, when you're taking care of yourself, you're taking care of everything else. Do not lose the spiritual dimension of the crisis. Have the eagle aspect that from above can see the whole, see more broadly. There is a social demand in this crisis, but there's also a spiritual demand. The two go hand in hand. Without the social dimension, we fall into fanaticism. But without the spiritual dimension, we fall into pessimism and lack of meaning. You are prepared to go through this crisis. Take your toolbar and use the tools available to you. Learn about resistance of the indigenous and African peoples. We have always been and continue to be exterminated 
but we still haven't stopped singing, dancing, lighting a fire, and having fun. Don't feel guilty about being happy during this difficult time. You do not have, no, you do not help by being sad and without energy. You help if good things emanate from the universe now. It is through joy that one resists. Also, when the storm passes, each of you will be able, will be very important in the reconstruction of this new world. You, will, you need to be well and strong. And for that, there is no other way than to maintain a beautiful, happy, and bright vibration. This has nothing to do with alienation. This is a resistance strategy. There's a rite of passage called the quest for vision. You spend a few days alone in the forest without water, food, protection. When you cross this portal, you get a new vision of the world because you've faced your fears, your difficulties. This is what is asked of you. Allow yourself to take advantage of this time to perform your vision seeking rituals. What world do you want to build for you? For now, this is what you can do. Serenity in the storm. Calm down. Pray every day. Establish a routine to meet the sacred every day. Good things emanate. What you emanate now is the most important thing. And sing, dance, resist through art, joy, faith, and love. Resist. Be reborn. I just saw a note that, um, yeah, at, at the end, I will be around for about 15 minutes and I can share that message on the chat box. Um, so I will I'll put it there. But I like this message on so many levels. Um, I think the primary level, though, is peace. And as you come to standing, we're going to start standing in Guji. Let's take a moment as you're standing. To stand with the feet on the earth. And when we stand grounded, we start with this sense of establishing ourselves here. The planet is our home, nature, we are manifestations of nature in human form. When we take care of ourselves, we take care of everything else. Just rest your hands one over the other onto the abdomen, the lower dantian. And this wish for peace, we have an opportunity here to open our hearts a little bit more, open ourselves to moving through the portal rather than falling down the hole. And remembering that we have this ability to, through our practices, meditation, qigong, yoga, whatever it might be for you, to, to take care of ourselves, be well and strong. There's no other way to maintain this than a beautiful and happy, bright vibration in ourselves, across the many continents that we are um, you know, collectively kind of, um, creating together today, it's positive vibration. And this has nothing to do with alienation. And as you exhale, begin to release that sense of opening to the peace, he ping, he ping. Like this uh, ability to feel even and steady, ping, ping an. This feeling of ping means the steadiness in Chinese, he ping. This peace, the steadiness. And then from that steadiness, let your knees bend a little, feel that the chest soften. And we'll do just a short warm up today, allowing the arms to start moving side to side in what's called constant bear. So the head is fairly steady and centered. The chin is a little bit lower, so the back of the neck is long. 
the hands very, very relaxed. And even as you start, the sense of what it is that you want to build for yourself right now. And every single moment that we are here, present, we have an opportunity to find serenity, whether it's in uh, the midst of this lockdown, the pandemic, or it's in the very present moment of how we might meet tension or relaxation, we can find serenity. And many of you have been coming so regularly to these live stream classes, which has been great for me. It's really built up the sense of community, but it's also shown just the, the strength of regularity and routine, meeting the sacred today and every day through just our rituals, doing something to move in the body, Doing something to bring the mind home to the expression and experience of the body. Yeah, this has this possibility that this small gestures of doing the practice regularly, creating these rituals for yourself, of building and establishing something that can last beyond the period that we're in to move us through this time and go through a portal rather than slide down the hole. To be the people of peace, Hopi, Kopi. To resist the difficulties of uh, confinement, not resist, but, but meet maybe, meet with a sense of um, the joy, being sad, I love that, does no one any good. We can be compassionate, that's very different than just falling into despair. But to create that uplift, to sing, to dance, and to have faith, joy, love. And these are the things that I feel, you know, when I move into my practices of of Qigong, yoga, meditation, and they give me that continuity, a chance to check in with myself, to create that sacred space, and to rediscover, to be reborn into this moment again and again, with that possibility of creating something positive as a vibration that moves in through my own cells and blood and bones, and hopefully out into the world. Even though I practice with all of you and demonstrate a lot more showing things, I still, every morning I get up, I have about an hour and a half to two hours of my own practice in the morning. And very often at night, I do the same. I sit down again, maybe not for as long. But that is my practice. That's my ritual. That's my sacred offering to myself, which is never separate from the world. When we take care of ourselves, we're taking care of everything else. I say this a lot when I teach that it's not narcissistic to care for yourself because we're not separate from everything else. And taking care of ourselves is taking care of the planet. And uh, the Hopi people, the uh, Kheping, people of peace, their outlook is very, very, very similar to what has underscored you know, the Taoist and Confucian principles of harmonizing with the natural world for the centuries. And I love that you know, in different places, the same ideas and the same respect and deep reverence for ourselves, which is a way of also recognizing the reverence for the world um, have come about. So you're gonna slow this down now. Come back into standing. And observe when you stand, a sense of the stillness. Move into presence and let it be a portal 
to do something simple, which is to feel what's here. Sensing the skin and any vibrations or sensations and tingling. This is awakening our embodiment, the cellular level, the energetic level. And turn your palms out. Natural breathing, low in your lower abdomen, dantian. And begin to lift the arms out to gather. Gathering sometimes that tendency that we all have to slip down the hole. That's often in the body, a feeling of contraction, tightness, closing in, stiffening, rigidity. So you don't even have to think of it as an emotion. Just think of it as a felt sense that you can gather and clear. Well, it could be an emotion as well, but clear as the hands come down, middle fingers face each other, centers of the palms face the earth, clearing out the, the physical embodiment and sensations that lead to that slipping away, closing in, closing down, tightening, maybe that accompanying feeling sometimes of falling down the hole. Clearing some of that out. Then gathering, gathering what feels like you can move through the portal, which is a feeling of greater space, receptivity, positive vibration, bright, happy vibration, clarity, ease, peace, hoping, hopi. Fill with that sense of the capacity you have right now for some of that peace to move through the portal. And what do we want to do? What do we want to build? What world do we want to see emerge from this period of confinement? Fill with that. And then gather what you just filled. Final round, gathering qualities that help you move through the portal. What you emanate now is the most important thing. Faith, joy, love, sing, dance, move. Seal these things in. Let them not just be conceptual, but a felt, embodied quality, resonant and more enduring. And just to release the feet for a moment before we stand in Wuji. You shift your weight onto one foot and just that circle out the ankle. If you like, you can circle the knee, and maybe even the hip. If balance is challenging, you just keep the ball of the foot on the ground and you circle. I'm doing my left leg. You can do your left leg or your right leg, it doesn't matter. And then reverse the circle, just circling the other way. And release that and shift. Changing sides. So again, it could be foot floating for balance. It could be including the knee. It could be including the leg joint where it meets the hip. If balance again is challenging. Then you just leave the foot, all of the foot on the ground. You're circling with a more steady anchor. So what's important is not the accomplishment or the performance but it's what is authentic and what brings you hoping, peace. Hopi, people of peace, be a person of peace. You reverse that circle. And I think, you know, you guys are all here. We're here collectively, however many of us there are. And good thing that we're doing this work, right? And to recognize the goodness of what you're doing as that contribution to 
the sense of being able to move out into the world again after this with some renewal, being reborn, having a maybe a, a more a positive outlook to offer. And then release. As you stand, we're gonna stand now in what's called wuji, emptiness stance. And this is a stance that we do a lot of, but for this class, I don't do a long period of standing because it's difficult. When you stand, the, the knees are a little bit more bent than they are straight. And so if your knees are bent, they should cover about half of your foot if you look down. Also with uh, the stance, the joints are all relaxed. So it, sometimes it helps just to take a breath in and tense, and then <sighs> relax. There's a combination here when you stand in Wuji of exertion and relaxation. It's not all limp as a way to be relaxed. What we're looking for is that higher vibration, the quality of peace. And peace doesn't come without some training and some work and some willingness to meet what's here and soften what we resist and what we come up against that's challenging. So you can stay here with the arms down. There's a second position that I've been offering with the arms at the level of the mid chest, middle dantian. Dantian is an energy center. So with this one, sometimes people have the arms more forward like you're holding a balloon. With one of my teacher in, in Beijing, I've been learning it with the elbows bent in just a little bit more, which for me actually means I can stay a little bit longer and relaxing the elbows and relaxing the joint spaces, really, really relaxing through the chest and the front channel from the tip of the tongue down to the base of the pelvic floor. Just move back so you can see my feet. The teeth here are closed without being clenched. Tongue rests behind the teeth at the roof of the mouth. And that paradox of letting go, relaxing, while exerting some conscious attention to be with what's here. And some of the, the paradox we meet, but also some of the the skill that we train and cultivate through this form. And this form is <laughs> like a lot of things. We can go down a hole and get like really troubled, struggled, tired, shaking, or we can see it as a portal. We move through this, we move into it, be with it, Breathe, the breath is relaxed in the belly. You're constantly present in the body. And so you use an opportunity to scan and identify places that you start to feel tense, rigid. And the exertion is to soften and relax and relax. And yet you're still creating a structure that takes a little bit of discipline and training to maintain. We're not standing in a way that we normally stand, lazy, sloppy, one hip shifted to one side. But we're standing in a way that optimizes unblocking blocked energy. Opening the channels through the stillness and shape relaxing the joint spaces, relaxing the skin, the fascia, but also training body and mind to build resilience and stamina, presence and strength. Ease, this pose called wuji or zhan uh, zhuang, it's the one form taught amongst all 7,000 plus forms of Qigong in the world. My Tai Chi instructor, he says, how much are you standing every day? He said, oh, between 10 and 25 minutes a day. It's like, oh, okay, good. Because this is what every form 
is built from. And to know peace, peace is a quiet, a quiet state, but it's a high vibrational energy. To know peace, we know stillness. When we know stillness, we can listen. We know listening, when we're able to listen, we don't just listen from our ears, but in Chinese, we listen from the ear, but also from virtue. The character for the ear is a combination of two radicals, the radical for the organ of the ear and the character radical for virtue, which has the character of the heart, mind, xin, and of the sun, and of uh, undivided attention, the eyes, sorry, not the sun, the eye has a character for the eye. So we see, we listen from our heart, our eyes, our undivided attention, our ears. And that gives us wisdom, insight, deeper knowing, allows us the ability and skill to slowly pick us up, you know, pick ourselves up from the hole if we slid down it and move through that portal. So we're here for another minute or so. Listening, finding stillness, balancing ex exertion and relaxation. Back body bright, front body channel soft. Back of the neck like a ballerina's neck lifted. Spheres, like you're resting your elbows if they're up on spheres. Your seat, almost like you're sitting gently down onto a big ball, a balloon sphere. Between your chest and your hands if they're at the middle position, a sphere. It's resting. When you begin releasing, you're looking for from the form, the beginning of movement from wuji, which means emptiness, spaciousness, vastness, which is never in isolation because we're always part of the whole, this unbroken and mysterious called the Tao. You look for the stillness within the movement as you begin releasing the arms, if they're up, if they're in the first position, you're also going to release them. Start to bend the elbows back slightly as you breathe in. And then rest your hands like they rest beneath the surface of water as you breathe out. The elbows never locked, the joint space is still soft. Orientating your efforts towards hoping, hopi, the person of peace, the people of peace. And then we're going to release that, shift your weight to the right leg and foot, draw the left heel to the right one, measure off one foot's distance wide. This is the final day, actually no, I'll teach it Monday, I'm teaching a class at Triodo, maybe the final Saturday that we're going to do what's called the Muscle Tendon Changing Classic, Yi Jing Jing. So if you're, if you're, right foot, my left foot, is also wanting a little break. You can also just re-measure the distance. We need to train our feet and our minds and our bodies to stand for longer periods of time gradually. So the muscle tendon changing classics, Yi Jing Jing. The first part is called regulating the chi. Chest is soft, in-breath, palms lift, center of the chest. Out breath, hands, palms turn down as they lower back down. This repeats as you breathe in, palms rise up. And the intention behind regulating your chi is really peace, harmony, alignment with the natural world, alignment of ourselves with everything that is around us. Once more, breath in. Turning the palms, out, breath down. And to do that, we need to be well and strong, to take care of our bodies and our homes. 
feed ourselves well, move ourselves with a sense of, of um, support for our health. So hands come up, in breath. This first form, out breath, arms resisting a little as they move out and forward. The heels also rise up. It's called Wei Tua, presents the pestle number one. Heels lower, hands come in, breath in. The resistance is a little, uh, uh, is outside the arms and that's important for beginning to train the muscles and the tendons. Tendons connect your muscles to the bones of your body. Inhale, lower the heels, draw the hands in. Keep the shoulders and elbows relaxed and exhale, lift the heels and move the arms forward. Inhale, hands draw in, heels lower down. Turn the palms, exhale, lower them back down. And then regulate the chi as you breathe in, rise up, keep the softness going through the hands and the shoulders. Exhale and release. And then the second round is Wei Chua presents the pestle number two. Hands rise up, level of the chest. This time, heels rise, but press the arms out and open. Again, if there's a little resistance against the outer arms. Inhale, heels down. This promotes balance, which is also helpful for peace. And exhale and open. Balance also gives us a relationship to the center of the planet, the center of the earth. We negotiate, inhale, our relationship of our center to the earth's center. Exhale and then rise as the arms move out, heels lift up. Remember that little resistance. Then it's easeful as you bring the arms and hands and heels down. Turn the palms down and exhale, soften down. Third round, inhale, hands lift, level of the chest. This time they turn, your palms lift, exhale, that heels rise up. And you're lifting your arms until the arms go straight and the palms lift like there's something heavy in them. Inhale and release down to so the move back so you can maybe see my hands. As you exhale, you're pressing up, but you're lifting something slightly heavy and you're going until the arms are fully straight alongside your ears. Inhale and relax that, heels down, hands down. Exhale and press up. In finding that balance of your center in relationship to the center of the world. Inhale and lower, heels down, hands down. Palms, exhale, turn down as they release down. Now most of you, I think, have been doing this for a while, so I'm going to not turn my back to you, but you're gonna take the right arm out and the left hand behind the back. Actually, change that out, sorry. Your left hand comes out to the side and your right hand comes to the lower back. And the back of the palm is turned towards your back. As you exhale, this is called transforming a plucked star into the Big Dipper. Bend your knees, cross the hand outside of the right leg. As you inhale, you're going to rise up, reach back for a star in the sky. And as you exhale, pluck that star and transform it as you turn across the sky over towards your right. Transform it to the Big Dipper. And then inhale, the left hand overhead. Feel the energy of the stars. And exhale, fill with that energy into the form of your own body. You can take an extra breath or two as the hand descends. Change out your arms, right arm out, left back of the palm at Ming Min, the gate of life, center of the lower back lumbar. Exhale, bend your knees and cross the hand outside of your left leg. I'm mirroring you, by the way. Inhale. And keep the hips forward as you reach back on the diagonal. It's very nice for the shoulders, stretches those tendons, activates them, muscles. Exhale and turn over towards your left, transforming that star into the Big Dipper. Then back overhead with the hand as a wand. And then exhale and slowly 
Bring that starlight you transform down into the body, filling it to the cells as a way to support that brightness and positivity and vastness of your experience, your cellular experience connected to the stars and the universe. Left arm out, exhale, bend. Inhale, root the feet, root the tailbone down, reach back, imagine your hand now plucks a star and it becomes like a wand that sweeps across the sky and makes the one star into the whole constellation of the Big Dipper. And inhale, back overhead. Exhale, and float. Letting the hand fill with starlight coming down. Natural breath, last time. Change out the hands, in breath. Look at the hand with your eyes. Exhale, bend the knees. Keep tracking the hand with your eyes. In Chinese, they call this shou yan, xiang shui. The eyes follow the hand. Inhale, back to a star in the sky. Pluck it as you exhale and transform that as you move across. Hand like a wand. Then back overhead as you breathe in. And filling as you exhale. The hand, very sensitive, like a feeler, that's able to transmute and transmit that energy from the universe, the stars, into your own body. Release both of the arms, step a little closer. And as you breathe in, you're gonna lift the hands up, level of the chest. As you breathe out, softening, regulating the chi. Vibration that's bright, beautiful, connected to all that is around you. Next one, I'm going to do it facing you this time. So near you, move my feet back a little bit. It's called turning nine cows around by their tails. You step your left foot forward and keep the legs a little bit wider like this. So you don't want the feet narrow with the feet one in front of the other, but wider like this. That's for the back knee, which will bend. Now, as you breathe in, you're gonna bend your, your left knee and move forward as the arms open forward. Now, as you exhale, you're gonna make fists by rolling in, pinky ring, middle index thumb. And then when you bend your back knee, you're also bending your right hand back and your left hand to the shoulder, elbow to the waist. All of that happens at the same time that you turn to your left. As you inhale, relax that and re-extend the arms, bend the front left knee. As you exhale, you to bend your back right knee, bring the back hand up your mid-back, front hand to the shoulder, lower the waist, elbow to the waist, and turn. Inhale forward, bend the front knee and open. So even in a strong action like this, turning nine cows around, turn, soften your chest and your belly, finding that inner calm and peace. Breath in. What would you do to build this world for yourself right now? What can you contribute that's cultivating strength, right? but also cultivating virtue, listening, stillness, quiet, joy, happiness, hopey, be a person of peace. Once more, in breath, forward. And then out breath, you're bending the back knee, turning from the waist, soften the chest. And then inhale back forward. As you exhale, you're gonna step, right foot forward left foot back and then I'm going to show you now from the side so the feet are still wide opening the arms breath in and as you exhale you know bend turning to your right exhaling back arm left arm to the low back inhale back forward and open curl the fingers one at a time into fists Soften your chest, so it's not poking forward when you turn, 
the chest softens in, belly softens back, almost like you're tucking the tailbone under. Inhale forward. Exhale, curling in, so there's that flexion of the spine. Inhale forward. This is the relaxing. And then this is a contracting, followed by an elongating, an elasticating. That pattern is a really healthy one for the muscles, the tendons, also affects the bones. It's a really good one for building suppleness and strength simultaneously. One more round, inhale forward. And then exhale, bending back and turning to your right. Inhale, open, and then back foot, step it forward as you exhale. Regulate the chi, inhaling. And just a reminder, what we're regulating is the sense of connection to an inner ease and tranquility and calm. Sense of feeling belonging in our own bodies to everything that is around us that is here, the natural world. So this next one, you'll measure off one foot's distance wide again with the feet. This one's called exhibiting claws, spreading wings, good for the lungs. And the lungs, just as a, a little aside, they're the second in command to your heart. They're like the chancellor to the prime minister or something like that, or maybe my, my political references are amiss but vice president to president, something like that. And as you breathe in, you want to be recognizing that you're supporting your lungs, which are really there to support your heart as well. And as you exhale, you know, start to bend your elbows back, knees bend, hands open like the wings. And then whenever I'm here, I want to do this. I can just do it again, but whenever I see myself on the screen with my fingers out like this by my head. So, then you can do it too, if you want. You make claws. And from the side, my knees are not bending forward, but my hips are bending back and my tailbone is curling under a little bit like that. Then when I'm exhaling next, you move the arms, hands forward as claws. And then the last minute, you spread your fingers open like this, and they become wings. Then they soften, they contract back in, and you draw the hands back in towards the chest. Then you make claws. You curl the tailbone under, soften the chest. Hips back, hands forward. Last moment, they become wings. Inhale, drawing in. Exhale, forward. Then spreading your wings. Inhale, retracting in, softening the hands. Make your claws and then exhale, the claws forward into wings. We're gonna do two more rounds. Inhale, retract in. Make claws and then at the end, you make wings. And I've lost count of how many we're doing, but some say do seven rounds and I'm not sure if we've done seven, but I'm just gonna assume. It's hard to multitask, talk, teach, demonstrate, and count. <laughs> Exhale, lower. And then relaxing in your wings. Opening the hands, palms face the earth, exhaling down. Regulating your chi in breath. This ritual is also just built into the sequence as a, a way to create the sacred in every moment. The ritual does that, it takes our ordinary experience and imbues them, you know, colors them in with meaning. So next we have in the E, jing, jing, it's called Nine Ghosts Drawing Swords. So I'm mirroring you, your left, your right hand above left. The hands are not far apart, but they're closer together at the center of the chest. Some of you have your hands quite far apart still, so a little narrower. Yeah. 
Inhale, open the two arms apart like you're drawing, unsheathing the sword from its scabbard. Then as you exhale, windmill the arms once more, and this time your right hand comes off the mid back and you hold the handle of the sword. Your left fingers come across to the ear and you touch the middle finger to the flap of the ear. Inhale and lift the elbow back. Notice I'm not turning the hips, but I'm just lifting the elbow, drawing the tailbone down. When you next exhale, bend your knees, cross the elbow outside of that right leg or towards that direction. Remember, these are muscle tendon changing classics. So change is, change is coming. <laughs> Inhale up and exhale and just go to where it's peaceful for you. Go to where it's cultivating positive vibrations for you rather than trauma <laughs> or aggression or making you slide down a hole, judgment. Go to where it's peaceful for you. Open as you breathe in, slide your arms apart. Change the arms out. So now the right arm ascends, the left hand comes up the mid back. You hold your hand around the handle of a sword. Fingertips, middle finger touches the flap of the ear. I'll just show you a close up here. So that little flap, middle finger there, hand spread wide. As you breathe in, tailbone descends. Also, the buttocks don't reach back like this. Tailbone descends, keeping them steady as you lift the elbow back in the jam. As you exhale, bend your knees, cross the elbow outside or towards the direction of outside your left leg. Inhale, root the feet, feeling the earth below, the sky above, in breath. Exhale and cross over. Once more, inhalation, finding the exertion and relaxation, balance between the two. Exhale and cross. Then as you inhale, you're going to ascend and open the two arms once more apart. Relax as you exhale the arms and hands down. Regulate the chi as you breathe in. What world do you want to build? Exhale, lower. So, feet. Now we're going to step three feet distance wide. One, two, three, return. So two options, you can practice this with the toes straight a little harder. You can practice this as I often show it because it's a lot easier and it's safer for the knees with the toes turned out. The concept of keeping the tailbone to the earth and the crown of the head to the sky is important, particularly as you start to bend the knees in this form. Because when you bend the knees, sometimes that releases the, the work of this, the, um, the strength of the muscle in the lower back area here called the psoas. So you want to keep the tailbone drawing down, even as the knees bend, that's going to strengthen the mid lower back. So the arms come out to the sides. This one has a sound. The sound is <sighs> Almost like Darth Vader. But take a breath in. One third of the way down, palms turn down. Remember to keep the tailbone down, crown of the head up. Also soften your chest. Inhale, lift back up, palms up. When I say chest softens, I'm not like slumping like this, but it's just a release. Exhale, two thirds. <sighs> Chest released. Tailbone curl a little down. Crown up. Inhale, ascend. Third round is to what you feel is all the way down in a peaceful way. 
the impersonal piece of Hopi cooking. Inhale, ascend. Exhale, fold the hands back in. Turn the right toes in, step the left foot closer. Regulate the chi as you breathe in. Turn the palms down, exhaling down. Next, we have Black Dragon exhibits its claw. So as a reminder, peace. It starts this claw. The best way I know of how to get people into the shape is to make peace with your fingers. And then you add, like the other three fingers are um, tan, like they're, um, they're, it's elastic and tan shin, a sense of subtle, su um, suppleness and strength. They come in towards each other, like they're squeezing around something soft but firm. And then when the elbow bends, your hand, it's gonna be out to the side like this. When your hand comes in, your elbow bends and the hand comes to the shoulder. Your eyes follow the hand as it crosses the chest. At a certain point though, you're gonna to wanna to turn your chest. Do your best to keep the chest steady and that will affect the muscles of the shoulder girdle and the tendons in a very different way. It's very strengthening without having to flex the, the chest muscle. You can feel the pectoral very, very strong if you put your hand there or on the back shoulder. So make your one foot's distance wide, which is actually your actual hip bones distance and your body's configuration. Rather than the outer hips, it's where the leg bones join your hip sockets, the acetabulum and femur heads. You're going to make fists, so the fourth finger base, fold your thumb to there, and then fold the other four fingers over that thumb, so it's kind of a funny thumb hiding fist. And then the fists start at your waist level. One foot's distance. Exhale, left hand down. Look at the hand with your eyes. Inhale, lift. Make your piece and then other three fingers come in, dragon's claw. It's kind of badass, I feel. You're crossing the hand. Looking at the hand and then stabilizing the shoulder, not turning the chest. Inhale, relax the hand to the outer right hip without touching. Exhale, hover the hand a couple inches away from the outer leg. Find the ground and then brush the ground. Inhale, come up the outer left leg this time. Touch the hand along the skin, up the gallbladder meridian, part of it. Return the hand, make the thumb hidden. Exhale, fist, right hand then opens. Inhale, it lifts, eyes follow the hand. Exhale, make your dragon's claw. Keep the chest and shoulders steady. Soften your knees though, and exhale over. Relax the hand, make it springs back to the outer left hip, and then hovering it down the outer leg until you reach the earth. Brush the hand along the earth, and then inhale up the outer right leg, ascending up. Exhale back into the side of the waist. Once more, each side, exhale, lower the left hand. Inhale, lift it. Make your dragon's claw as you cross, exhaling without turning the chest. Inhale, back to the outer right hip, part of the gallbladder meridian. You're hovering the hand down. That pairs with the liver relating to wood energy. Brush the earth where wood grows. Rise up the outer or the um, outer left leg, touching the side of the leg. Exhale back in. Right hand down. So wood energy, its emotion is anger. Exhale, make your dragon's claw. This practice can help to uh, ameliorate, mitigate some of the tendencies towards unhealthy or misdirected anger. Exhale, slide the hand down the outer left leg without touching it and touch the ground. 
Bring yourself up the outer right leg, ascending up. With less misdirect to anger, we might increase our capabilities, releasing the arms of not falling down the hole, but moving through the portal. Inhaling, regulating the chi. Being well and strong, exhaling down. Healthy and strong, taking care of your bodies and your homes and your spirit house. Beautiful qualities that actually have stronger resonance in the world than we can possibly know. So this next one is the most dynamic of the Yi Jing Jing. It's called Tiger Seizing Prey. So I'm gonna to move to the center, so I've got room either side. And measure out three feet distance wide again. Turn. I'll go slow the first two rounds, follow along. And then the rep repetition, I'll go more rhythmically. You're gonna turn a little bit. Your right toes turn and your left toes lift up. I'm bending, bending my back knee. I'll show you my knees so you can see them more. Bending my back knee, my arms lower down, make claws. This one opens the rim mind, the front yin conception vessel. Open up, reach back with your claws, bend the front knee, and seize prey, be a tiger seizing prey. It's almost like a flat back. Option one, you stay there and lengthen the back leg back. Option two, you can lift on a bent knee, front knee, lift the back leg up. If it lifted, when you next breathe out, exhale it far back and down and bring your hands to the front thigh. Option one, your leg is lifted, back knee, exhale, or you lower it down, option two. Then inhale, roll feline-like up into the back end. Again, this is opening this whole front channel called the rim line. If the back knee was up, you lift it first, Pivot around, cross the forearms, draw the tailbone down, crown the head up. Turn, pivoting on your left heel, toes in. Right toes, lift them, lower the arms. Reach your arms back and up with clawed hands, and then exhale, seize your prey forward. Stay there, option one, lift the back leg, option two, take a breath in. If the leg lifted, you exhale and you set the foot far back. Option one, knee up. Option two, knee down. I'll show option one. Rolling in breath, open through the chest. Exhale, pivot. Keep the tailbone down, crown up, arms, forearms cross. Turn the back toes in, lift the front toes up. Bend your back knee as the arms lower. Inhale up and overhead. Seize the prey as you exhale forward. Back leg up or down, inhale. If it lifted, exhale, set it far back and down. Roll with your front hand, hands on the front knee. Roll yourself feline like up into the back bend. Exhale, turn. Cross the arms without touching. Shift. Left toes in, right toes out. Bend the back knee, lift the front toes, arms go down, back, up. Exhale, seize the prey. Option one there, option two, lift, breath in. Exhale, foot reaches back, hands to the front thigh, rolling, in breath, open. Out breath to finish, turn. Cross the arms. Shift your weight to the right leg. Draw the left leg in. Release the arms down. And then regulate the chi. Breath in. Exhale. Release down. Take a moment while I <laughs> lower my trouser pant leg 
Chinese, wherever you want to call them, that down. <laughs> and then I'm going to do the next one, second to last form. This one, it's called beating the heavenly drum with the fingers. You slide them, index finger, the pointer finger, slides off the middle finger, and that taps as it slides off. It taps the back of the head. And then in a moment, you're going to be cupping the ears to close them. So it's called Da Gong Shi, bowing down in prostration. One foot's distance wide. Hands open, elbows up, and by the ears. Close the ears, soften the knees a little, bend one third of the way forward. Tap the heavenly drum seven times. Root the feet, inhale, open. We're bowing down in prostration. What do you want the world to look like? What do you want to build for you? Bowing down, humbling yourself down to possibilities. Two thirds of the way down, beat the heavenly drum. Inhale, ascend, open the ears. Bowing down, exhale all the way to what you feel is all the way down, safely, peacefully. Tap the heavenly drum, close the ears. When you're done ascending, rising, opening, <laughs> I was looking at myself like, hair is crazy town. There we go. Inhale, opening. And then exhale back to center. Release the arms out. Slide the arms down. Regulate the chi. Calm down. Pray every day. Establish a routine to meet the sacred every day. Exhale down. And this is how we're going to get through a lockdown. It's by establishing something sacred in our lives, seeing the ordinary and the extraordinary, or the extraordinary and the ordinary. So we are going to do the last form. It's called swinging the tail. You interlace your fingers. As you exhale, feet are still the same, one foot's distance wide. You can exhale one third of the way down. The arms here are just hanging, straight down. Lift your head and your chest forward so you look at the screen. Swing yourself around to the left, swing the head and chest over. Inhale back into center. Keep the head chest lifted. Exhale, swing the tail. So this gets the front and back channels of the body. Do my rin, my main rivers, conception and governing uh, vessels. Inhale, back in. Two thirds of the way down, exhale. Lower the head. Lift your head and chest as you next breathe in. Swing yourself around to the left as you exhale. Back into center as you breathe in. Exhale, over to the side. Inhale, back into center. Lower the head, fall to what you feel is all the way down in the way that a person of peace would fold. Be that person of peace. Lift your head and your chest. Hopi, hoping. Exhale and turn to the left. Inhale back to center. Keep your head and chest lifted. Exhale over to the right. Inhale back to center. Lower your head. Exhale down. Release your fingers, soften your knees, and start to roll up as you breathe in. Dangling heavy with your arms down. Head is the last thing to ascend. Once you're up, 
Regulate the chi, breath in. And breath out. Now, just for a moment, stand back in Wu Chi. Gather the benefits of your muscle tendon changing classic, Yi Jing Jing. The benefit to support being well and strong, but also with the intention. Intention is most important of, of all things in Qigong. Filled with that willingness to move through the portal, that these practices might help you actualize, materialize, orientate towards. Taking care of our spirit house through the experiences of the body. You can't know spirit without integrating the experiences of the body. And to finish today, we're going to revisit the five elemental mudra forms we did um, earlier when I started these practices and live stream classes. So we start with the foundation of Wu Qi, softening the joints, relaxing through the front channel, brightening the back channel, teeth closed without being clenched, tongue to the roof of the mouth. First is for metal, holding moon. Just gonna be there three breaths. So index fingers like they're pointing toward the opposite nipple. Hands soft, elbows are a little out. Holding the moon, three breaths. Let them be slow, gentle, full, deep, smooth, less choppy. Metal element about confinement, containment, but also about inspiration. Next breath in, inhale, open. Breath is what our lungs are mainly helping us do. Right? The lungs are the organs associated with metal. This is called lungs breathing chi. Cross the forearms, one hand in front of each lung. You want to make sure they're, they're not like this in front of the chest, but they're crossed a little bit more specifically and clearly. And then there's a gap, so I'm not touching my skin, nor are the skins of my forearms touching. Three rounds. Inhale, lungs, breathing chi. Expand out as you breathe in. Contract in as you exhale. Twice more. Lungs, the chancellors to the heart, second in command. And our heart is the organ we know seeks spaciousness, ease, and peace. To be a person of peace, the Hopi, you know, they're really listening probably just to the heart. Open as you breathe in, arms apart. As you breathe out, they come to the low back and they cross one hand holding opposite forearm, resting against the back where the kidneys are, the bases of the lungs are, but also the transverse colon. Three breaths there. The colon pairs with the lungs as the other yang meridian to the yin lungs for middle. And it's about letting go. And we can use this time to really look into ourselves and at our lives. And what can we release and relinquish in order to be reborn and transformed from this period into a person of peace? Maybe not reborn, but just rediscover our innate capacity for who we are when we are at ease. Less ruffled by ambition. Release as you breathe in. Mary Oliver, 
And she has a line in a poem, exhale down. She says, let the voodoos of ambition sleep. From the top of your arm bone, rotate in and let the backs of the hands face each other. Elbows are a little more straight than they are bent like that. So there's just a release. Yeah. Dripping down, large intestine, letting go. Let the voodoos of your ambition sleep. From, wa from metal, rather, um, get water. From metal is an uh, element associated with autumn. Autumn becomes winter. So as you open, take a breath in. You do rippling waves, moving tides. So there's a little bend in straightening of the legs. Again, my hips are bending more back, and my knees are going forward, and then moving the arms forward. Tailbone softens, chest softens rippling waves as I draw the hands back in. Then the palms lift up towards the center of the chest. Again, my hips draw down and back, tailbone under, chest soft. The palms then turn as I exhale and ascend back up through the crown. Water relates to that listening. The ear is a sense organ of the water element. And water, when we listen, we gain insight and wisdom. The archetype of water is the philosopher. Deep wisdom from water element cultivation, breath in. Which our world could definitely use some wisdom right now. And exhaling down. Inhaling down with the hips, but rippling the arms forwards. Ascending through the crowd as the arms descend, like they're sliding along the surface of water. And then again, the hips draw down as the arms ascend, palms up. Balancing complementary forces, yin yang. Exhale, ascending as you descend. And then from water, we get wood. Water feeds the growth of wood. And this is a spiraling hands mudra. So the left hand spirals up, the right fingers spiral down. And the hands, the palms are facing the opposite direction of each other. Oftentimes they end up like this, but turn the top palm towards your left. You can also get that spiral of the wrist over time, but you can work it from the, the head of the arm bone rather than just the wrist. So there's a little bit of turning inwards. Downward root, upward lift, happening simultaneously, giving us the stability of the roots down for the upward growth and reach of our climbing out of the portal, moving through the portal, out of the hole. Arms are aligned, so they're forward, backward aligned and also aligned left and right, so the wrists are one over the other. Changing as you breathe in. And spiraling as you breathe out. Again, your right hand is facing palm to the right, left to the left. There's a little gap in the underarms. Exertion and relaxation. Effortlessness arrived at through steady training and discipline, repetition. In Qigong and martial arts, there's a lot of repetition until the forms become something just natural, they flow, less thought, less struggle, less performance, more authenticity, more ease. Downward root to help the upward grow. Spring energy. Spring goes to summer, wood burns and helps fire grow. You open the arms as you breathe in. And hands to heart from the two directions. Bring what nourishes your heart. Fold the hands one over the other, lower the chin towards your chest. Peace is a quality that comes from the heart. 
be a person of peace, we do what we can to nurture and support our heart to its optimal, balanced, healthy function. Twice more, open, lift the chin. Uh, the heart often can get overstimulated, panicky, burnout. You know, this time of confinement, though, is a really good time to just slow down that extra external stimulation. Let the heart feel a bit more rested at ease. I'm assuming that is, of course, that you can be privileged to have a home that's supportive of that. But even an opportunity at home to work with virtue, if there's some struggle and strife and rife, open, breath in. An opportunity to look at ways to heal wounds and trauma through the heart and from the heart, exhaling in. We do that through listening. Do that through seeing the positive, the vibrations, the value that we can give to moving through that portal instead of sliding down the hole. Lift the chin and chest. Not the chest, just the chin, actually. Leave your left hand in a prayer position in front of the chest. It's a little bit of a space away, a couple of inches away. And then descend the right palm, the knee to the left. They're aligned left and right, so the wrist is over the palm, and also forward and back, so they're one right over and under the other. Earth mudra. I like finishing sometimes with the st steadiness and stability of earth, the representation of balance, balancing opposing forces, balancing our experience of being human with being spirit, of relaxation and exertion, of breath in and breath out, of releasing and also being disciplined, changing the arms in breath, sliding them out breath into the same position with the other hands now in place. Resisting that sliding down the hole through poetry and art and love, music, singing, dancing, faith, joy, held gently by the steadiness of earth that allows for all things, supports them all. As you breathe in, begin to release. Breathe out, soften the arms and hands down. Closing form for peaceful chi, gather. Shogun, we call this sometimes closing practice. And peaceful chi, be a person of peace, a hopi, he ping, even and steady. Harmonious, he means harmony. Harmonious steadiness is peace. Especially in the eyes of the storm, cultivate peace. Return your hands to the lower dantian, steadying your breath. Make a fist with your dominant hand. For me, that's my right hand. Fold the other hand over that fist. Three bows to finish. First bow is to each other. From around the world, bowing to this global community we've created in a time of isolation and closed borders. Our borders are open, borderless. Second bow is to your teachers, past, present, and future, for all their endeavors, all their endeavors to come to be people of peace. 
Third final bow is a bow to yourself. Bow to yourself, you bow to those who've given you life, parents, grandparents, ancestors, all those who've come before you as far back as to the source, perhaps, that is one. Thank you all so much for coming and joining different time zones, different times of day, different places in the world to be together. It means a lot to me. Um, and uh, I'll be around for another 15, 10, 15 minutes if anybody would like to chat. Uh, somebody had asked if I could send the Hopi message. <laughs> I will do my best now to copy and paste that. Um, see if I can do that. And if you guys have questions, oops, that didn't work. If you have questions, you're welcome to use this time now to also ask any questions you might have. Um, See, I can paste that in. <laughs> oh. um, tell you what, I'll put it up on my Facebook page. And I will, um, if you're not on my Facebook page, it's just Mimi Kuo Deemer, something like that. <laughs> Yoga, Qigong, meditation, and uh, I will, I will add it there.